Among the many different kinds of research being done on the International Space Station, there are some experiments that are trying to develop new technologies that would benefit future deep space exploration or life on Earth. And then there are some where uh, the, both of those things are the case. One example in that latter category is an experiment that is known as synthetic muscle. And that's flying on the International Space Station now in order to test how it uh, holds up under the radiation that uh, exists in space. Joining us this morning to tell us more about it is the principal investigator and developer of the product, Dr. Lenore Rasmussen, the founder and chief technology officer at RAS Labs in Quincy, Massachusetts. Good morning, Dr. Rasmussen. Good morning, Pat. Uh, your product, Synthetic Muscle, is intended to do, I guess, just what the name implies. How did you become interested in developing a product like that? Um. When I was in grad school, I, uh, I have an agricultural background, and one of my cousins was um, working on the farm and was injured pretty severely. And as the resident scientist in the family, I was put in charge of looking at prosthetics. And um, there are some wonderful solutions, but I was kind of disappointed nonetheless in what I found and felt as a kind of young, naive chemist at the time that um, if you could develop something that responded to electricity, or some other stimulus, you could kind of bridge that gap between form and function. You could make a prosthetic that both looked and moved naturally. Now, part of what I understand you're trying to develop this for is to, that it, it will have a, an impact in robotics in space. Um, why would a synthetic muscle improve the performance of a robot? Several reasons. Part of what I'm trying to do is to produce human-like grasp, which is both gentle and firm. And for robotics, particularly for grippers, that remains a challenge. Also, our materials are self-sensing, which means when there's mechanical pressure, the impedance changes. So not just for prosthetics to move naturally and to be able to sense what's going on, but for robotics, that, that element that is often missing is touch, that these can be integrated into one solution would revolutionize the way we look at, at, at motion. Now, you got some help from uh, CASIS in order to get this experiment on orbit, right? Correct. Yeah, CASIS was very useful. Um, actually, uh, in mentoring, I, I was one of the Mass Challenge um, 2013 Global Accelerator. Went through that program, and that's where I met CASIS. Um, they, one of the, uh, Cynthia Bohut was one of my mentors. And my materials, though, I'm kind of, my focus was on the prosthetic community. I have done extreme temperature conditions prior to that when I was, you know, back in the Princeton area. Um, these materials lend themselves to being radiation resistant, the class of polymers that they're in, plus we did some additives and coatings on the um, ISS experiment. So that just was, was just, it was a great fit. It's been a wonderful um, experience. Explain to me what it is that is, is happening with your experiment on orbit now. Okay, I actually have a mock experiment that, um, just to show people, there are four um, kind of protective cages, a little more sophisticated than this, but they ha each have eight samples. One of them is my synthetic muscle. Um, then the next two slots have different additives to enhance the radiation effect. Then the next few slots have uh, coatings, various coatings, such as the Mylar that's cu currently being used in space um, suit technology. Also some specialized coating from the uh, U.S. Army Natick Labs. And then the last, um, the last spot, the last two spots have combinations of inhibitors and coatings. There's four of these. Two of them are my Generation Three material. Two of these cages up there are my Generation Four materials. And then in these micro environments, they're all encapsulated separately. There's like one mm -hmm. um, Teflon bag around it. So um, each of the generations has a dry and a moist environment. In order for the synthetic muscle to work, it operates best moist, just like real human tissue. Um, but it can be dried and then rehydrated. So that's one thing to consider for traveling is could it be, you know, um, desiccated, dried out, and then wherever it lands, you know, be reactivated with moisture. And then um, of the four uh, experiments, up there, I also have four on Earth under the same conditions as kind of like the twin, it's the control, it's like the twin study. So there's 
32 samples and four protective cages on the ISS and the same here on Earth in our Quincy lab. It'll be very interesting for you to, to uh, get those samples back and, uh, and move on to that next step. Uh, thank you for taking the time to tell us about it this morning. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Yes, I can hardly wait to, um, the, the, most of the analysis will be back here on Earth to see Doctor, how we help them. Dr. Lenore Rasmussen is the uh, principal investigator of the synthetic muscle experiment that's underway now on board the International Space Station.